Before we go to resuming debate, it's my duty pursuant to Standing Order 38 to inform the House that the questions to be raised tonight at the time of adjournment are as follows. The Honourable Member for Langley Aldergrove in respect to seniors. The Honourable Member for Renfrew, Nipissing Pembroke in regards to national defence. And the Honourable Member for Selkirk, Interlake, Eastman also in respect to national defence. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's nice to be so warmly welcomed. Um, I rise today to speak to uh, the motion brought by the Honourable Member from Victoria. Uh, he would know that I hold him in high regard even though he's not here, um, though regrettably I'm speaking against his motion. I also want to thank the uh, Honourable Member from Charlottetown for his uh, gracious introduction. I'll try to live up to his high expectations. Um, let me start by reminding the House, uh, Mr. Speaker, that our government has committed to legalize, strictly regulate and restrict access to marijuana. Le gouvernement du Canada a comme but The Canadian government seeks to keep marijuana far from children and to prevent uh, criminals from uh, taking adva ad advantage of illegal trade. A responsible approach. We do not want to rush or introduce precipitous changes which are unnecessary and could needlessly complicate the transition to a properly designed and regulated system of restricted access to marijuana. As the Minister for Health said in her recent speech to the United Nations, our approach to drug policy, including the legalization of marijuana, must have a solid scientific foundation. I'd like to use my time today to talk about some of what the science says about marijuana and health. There are both health risks and potential therapeutic benefits from marijuana. While new evidence of risks and benefits continue to emerge, we currently have more evidence about the harms, particularly the harms to youth. There is evidence of very real and negative health effects of marijuana consumption, particularly for young people. Les risques pour la santé associés à la consommation régulière de la marijuana pendant l'adolescence et au début de l'âge adulte lorsque le cerveau est encore en développement inclut des effets dommageables à long terme. Regular marijuana can lead to an increased risk of addiction and therefore potentially longer lasting harms to mental functioning, such as deficits in attention, memory, learning, and even IQ, Mr. Speaker. This is particularly true for use that begins in early adolescence. Il existe des preuves qu'une consommation régulière. There is evidence that regular consumption of marijuana in adolescence and early adulthood can have negative repercussions on academic success and uh, increases the likelihood of school dropout. Marijuana use has also been associated with an increased risk of psychosis and schizophrenia especially in those who have a personal or family history of such mental illnesses. These effects can cause profound problems for the individuals and their families. All of this is of particular concern given the high rates of use of marijuana among young Canadians. Les jeunes font leur premier essai de marijuana. Young people often try marijuana for the first time at age 14. 12 had, a reported, had reported use of marijuana during the years 2012 and 2013. Moreover, Health Canada's most recent Canadian tobacco, alcohol and drug survey found that 11% of Canadians aged 15 or older reported having used marijuana at least once in 2013. When examined more closely, the data reveals that 25% of young people aged 15 to 24 years reported use in the previous year. Les jeunes Canadiens affichent des taux élèves inquiets. Young Canadians have alarmingly high rates of marijuana consumption as compared to other countries. A study by UNICEF found that Canadian youth aged 11 to 15 are the highest users of marijuana compared to their peers in other developed countries. 28% of 15-year-olds in Canada reported using marijuana at least once in the previous year. Malgré les risques accrus pour les Despite heightened risks for ad adolescents who consume marijuana, the survey on uh, drug consumption of students in Ontario conducted in 2015 indicates that among adolescents, the risk of harm associated with the marijuana consumption is declining. Prime Minister Trudeau cited the risks of marijuana use to the developing brain when he said that, quote, 
we need to make sure that it's harder for underage Canadians to access marijuana, and that will happen under a controlled and regulated regime. One of the fundamental reasons that incited us to legalize is to allow us to uh, regulate and uh, control the access to marijuana. Responsible as we follow through on our commitment. We need to take the time necessary to get the approach right. We are concerned that half measures, such as decriminalization, as the Honourable Member from Victoria proposes, will only send the wrong message to our young people and amount to a disservice to the public. Decriminalization would, on balance, amount to a disservice to the public for a number of reasons. First, it does nothing to address the supply side of the issue, leaving serious questions regarding the quality of the substance which we aim to regulate. Second, it does nothing to reduce the law enforcement and judicial resources which would be necessary to still prosecute certain contraventions under a new decriminalization regime. And third, and perhaps most importantly, or equally importantly, it would do nothing to stop the flow of proceeds to the pockets and accounts of organized crime. As you can see, Mr. Speaker, this is a complex issue, and many perspectives need to be considered in order to create a safe, secure, and tightly regulated system for the legal production and distribution of marijuana. That is why our government will soon launch a task force that will give us expert advice on how the legalization process should take place. The task force will include perspectives from many different sectors, including health, justice, law enforcement, and public safety. We want to take the time to hear from experts across a variety of fields who have an interest in this important issue. We must learn from the experience of other jurisdictions who have legalized marijuana, and we must consider the implications of legalization for the provinces and territories. As I have said, the science on marijuana risks and benefits is evolving. Some clinical studies suggest that some strains have potential therapeutic benefits for some medical conditions, such as certain types of severe chronic pain. There is emerging evidence that some strains may perhaps be useful in treating epilepsy in children and adults. What is clear is that as the scientific evidence continues to advance, Canadians will need a system which strictly regulates the sale and access to marijuana and ensures that Canadians have the information they need to make informed and reasonable choices about their health. We believe that legalization, regulation and restricted access to marijuana is the best approach to protect our children from both accessing marijuana and from criminal records so that, that may negatively affect their lives. To that end, we will introduce legislation in the spring of 2017 to keep marijuana out of the hands of children and illicit profits out of the hands of criminals. We are convinced this is the best way to protect our children and to protect young people while enhancing public safety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to inform the House on this important commitment for the government. For those reasons, I am against the motion proposed by the Honourable Member from Victoria. I would encourage members to make the same decision. Thank you. Here, here. Uh, questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Fort uh, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for his speech. I might gently remind him that it's against the standing orders to mention the presence or, or absence of members in the gallery. Uh, but moving on from that, he said that we should learn from the experience of other jurisdictions, and I very much agree with that. Every case where we've seen the legalization of marijuana, use has gone up significantly. And I asked the Parliamentary Secretary if he could name a jurisdiction where that didn't happen, and he wasn't able to, to name one. I agree that there are certainly problems with the current system, which is why our party advocates an alternative, which is we allow police a ticketing option, but we maintain marijuana as a criminal offense. That allows police officers that middle option in the many cases where it might not be practical uh, or, or proportionate to prosecute. Uh, and, and that, I think, is part of the problem. But allowing the ticketing option while maintaining criminality, from my perspective, would give us the best of both worlds. And, and if the member thinks differently, perhaps he could point to a single jurisdiction in the world where we did see a reduction in use associated with legalization, because I don't think he can name one. The Honourable Member for Eglinton-Lawrence. 
Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the honourable uh, colleague across the aisle for his question. I think it's well put. Um, I think the short answer is that um, this middle option, which he describes his party recently endorsed at a convention, sounds uh, strikingly similar to the decriminalization regime which has been uh, put forward by the NDP member. And it is for those reasons that I do not believe that the middle option, as described by the honourable colleague, um, would either address the uh, supply side of the issue, would address the um, scarce resources of law enforcement and the courts, which are currently under tremendous strain and pressure. Um, there is no answer to that. And most importantly, as I said before, it does nothing to address our aim, our intent to deprive organized crime from the illicit profits, the proceeds of crime which they would continue to derive in any kind of regime where um, we did not address the actual quality of the substance which we aim to strictly regulate. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate uh, my colleagues' comments on the matter. Um, I have a question. He brought up the issue of uh, resources and uh, that this motion uh, wouldn't impact uh, those resources, police resources. Uh, I beg to differ. I think that if, if the police were able to uh, move a lot of the attention away from some of these, the smaller crime, and we're able to put the resources into uh, the organized issues, the high drug offenses, that's where they could actually make a difference. I want to ask my colleague if he does not agree that if they were not able, if they were able, sorry, to put the resources into those, uh, those high drug traffic offenses which involve organized crime, would that not make a difference? Honourable Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Well, I, uh, having spent uh, the better part of 12 years as a former federal prosecutor in downtown Toronto, having worked in organized crime, having prosecuted both street-level drug trafficking as well as higher-level drug trafficking, I can say to him uh, with some credibility, I hope that the, 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 the regime which we are proposing right now is precisely aimed at exercising good judgment and sound strategy in how to manage the important um, file, the marijuana file. Um, Contraventions will still require police to exercise judgment, to expend resources, to lay tickets, to prosecute those tickets in a court which is yet to be defined by the Honourable Member um, or um, his colleague who is, who, who is advancing this motion. So that is the flaw in creating a decriminalization regime. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask the member um, what his opinions and thoughts are about the motion presented by the NDP. We've been hearing a lot of talk about a very idealistic approach that somehow putting this legislation into place piece, piecemeal, I would say, uh, and decriminalizing right now would just lead to, you know, people growing marijuana in their gardens and making marijuana that's less strong than the marijuana that's available now and it would be safer and all these very idealistic uh, opinions. However, they completely fail to recognize that um, the profits that would still be gained by illegal criminal organizations. I'd like to get the member's opinion about that. Thank you. Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my honourable colleague for the question. Um, I do agree that it is important not to uh, be ideological in our approach to how it is we propose to strictly regulate um, marijuana on a go-forward basis. Um, as, minister, as the Minister of Health said in her recent speech um, at the United Nations, um, we cannot arrest ourselves out of the situation. The status quo is not working. We need to take an evidence-based, a scientific-based approach. The Minister of Justice has said the same thing. This is a consistent theme which runs through all, all of our government's policies, be it on this file, be it on health, be it on the economy. This government does not favour ideology over principled, evidence-based decision-making. It's the reverse, Mr. Speaker, and I am proud to be part of this new approach. Thank you.